We all want a home that's cozy and inviting without feeling cluttered, but in practice that can sometimes be hard to achieve. And so we'll swing back and forth on a pendulum from sterile and boring to claustrophobic and messy. But the key to designing a space that we love is to find balance. And so today we're going to look at a few tips that can help you to create a beautiful, more minimal home that's pared down but still welcoming in a place that you're excited to spend time in. And these are all really universal principles and rules that we're going to be looking at. So regardless of what your personal decor style is, whether you prefer that classic minimalist look or maybe something a bit more boho or traditional, these are going to work for you. Because creating a cozy minimalist space has a whole lot less to do with the end look that you're going for and more about the feeling that you want to create. But with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump right into this. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is to pick a simple color palette. And when people think of a minimalist color palette, I find that their minds immediately jump to no color at all. Everything is completely YA, or maybe you have a couple pops of black and gray thrown in. There's very little, if any, color. If that ultra minimal look is your thing, then by all means, go for it. But in my opinion, incorporating a bit more color really can help to warm up your home and make it feel cozy. One of the best ways to do that is to use earthy and neutral colors as the foundation of your color palette and then build from there. So what I like to do when designing a color palette is I usually like to pick anywhere from three to seven colors, just depending on the size of the room and how colorful I'm wanting to make it. And then begin with select kind of the starker color so your black your white maybe you want to go a bit softer and do cream and brown it's really up to you then I'll add in some of those more nature inspired colors and tones so think through what are the colors that you see outside maybe it's a specific wood tone that you're wanting to incorporate or some type of green that you would see in maybe plants that you could incorporate into your house but I like to pick a few more nature inspired colors that are really going to ground the space give it that cozy and inviting vibe that I feel like the outdoors really does give. And then if you want to brighten things up, pick a few more fun accent colors that really speak to you. Of course, there's a ton of flexibility with this and you can really play around with and pick whatever colors really going to speak to you. But your color palette really does kind of set the tone for your home, sets the vibe of your space. So you really want to be intentional about picking colors that work well together and that are going to help you to create a cozy and welcome experience in your home. And then another great principle to really keep in mind is that you want to use harmonious numbers in your decor. In interior design, there's something called the rule of three. This comes from the Latin phrase omni trium perfectum, and it means that everything that comes in threes is perfect. And there really is something about odd numbers that challenges our brains a bit and makes things feel more interesting. So anytime you can have a grouping of three in decor, that's always a great idea, but this concept really applies to all sets of odd numbers as well. So whether you want to just have one item, three, five, seven, once you get past that point, it might start feeling a bit cluttered, but I mean, hey, it might work for you. That can be a great guideline to follow as you're perhaps displaying art in your home or trying to style up a shelf. Of course, I think it's important to keep in mind there is also a place for even numbers too. But when you're using even numbers in decor, I think that it's really important to focus on symmetry. So two pictures that are placed beside each other or perhaps stacked one on top of another can look great as well. You just want to really make sure that everything is perfectly even and that in some way it's kind of drawing the eye in. Whether you're using odd or even numbers, you really want to try to style things in a way that creates a feeling of balance and harmony. All right, then one very practical tip is just to build from basics. When it comes to decorating your home, I find that it can be really helpful to use a handful of key functional and timeless furniture pieces as the foundation of your decor and then build from there. Maybe it's a beautiful wood dining table with very simple, clean lines or a cozy couch that you snuggle up on and use all the time. Pieces like this are really the heart of our home. They're things that we use all the time. So it really makes sense to design our homes in a way that really highlights those pieces. So whenever I'm trying to refresh or to update a space, one of the first things that I like to think through is what are the key furniture pieces that I really want to build around? And sometimes that looks like using items that I already have. Other times it looks like going out and buying something new. But using furniture that's really functional and timeless as a base really does just make the entire rest of the process so much easier. 
Then one important tip that's going to help your home feel more visually appealing is to have a focal point. Reducing visual clutter is a good thing, but you don't want to be left with nothing to look at. In my opinion at least, that's boring and it takes the idea of minimalism to the point of being sterile. So as you're decorating, think through what is the visual journey that you want to take people on. And whenever we're looking at a space, our eyes naturally kind of journey throughout a room, stopping at one place first, then moving on to the next item and the next to really take in the space as a whole. So a great way to create a kind of natural visual path for people to follow is to begin with a focal point. This is going to be that thing that just naturally draws people's attention. So it could be a fun colored accent chair, a beautiful wood cabinet, a piece of art, really just anything that's going to stand out and draw people's attention to it. You can use that as stop one on the visual journey and go from there. But then another great tip when it comes to minimal yet cozy decorating is simply to remove one item. And I've always loved the quote by Coco Chanel that goes, before you leave the house, look in the mirror and take one item off. And that's great advice when it comes to deciding what to wear, but it's also a principle I find that can be really useful when implemented in our own homes as well. And it's just that idea of restraint. I find that in decorating, it can be easy for us just to always think that adding one or two extra items is the solution to really making our spaces really have that feel and that look that we're going for. But sometimes it's actually by removing things that we're finally able to create that vibe. And removing that one extra item can really help bring breathing space to our decor. And then another big principle that you'll want to keep in mind is to focus on lighting. There are really two parts of this one. The first is just to take advantage of natural light. I see it happen all the time where people will have these big, beautiful windows and always keep the shutters closed, or they'll have thick, heavy curtains that block half of their windows. So wherever possible, I want to encourage you, let the sunlight in. It's going to bring such a feeling of warmth to your home. But then in places where natural light might not be as accessible, maybe you live in an apartment or just a home with small windows, unfortunately that is a thing that happens, or you're just wanting to consider your lighting for the evening as well, really encourage you to think about how you can use very huga sources of light. So think warmer tones and side lighting. I love using lamps and candles. These are really going to help you to create that cozy feeling where you just want to chat for hours with a friend or loved one or to curl up with a book and a blanket. All right, but then this next tip is a bit more broad and that's just to create an intentional floor plan. The way that your rooms are laid out can either enhance or detract from your goals for that space. So consider each room in your home and really try to position your furniture for maximum functionality and flow. So in your living room, make sure that your couches and chairs are angled in such a way that allows for natural conversation. In your bedroom, you want to position your furniture so that it's easy to move around and that things don't feel too cramped. Often, if there's a room in your home that just doesn't quite feel right, the problem goes back to your floor plan. So just consider how you might be able to reconfigure that space to better serve your functional needs. Then one amazing way just to make a home instantly feel more cozy is to use textiles to really inject life into your house. Especially if you're working with a more neutral color palette, using textures can be a great way just to add an instantly more layered and interesting feeling. It adds interest and detail without adding clutter and can make your space feel less one-dimensional. I especially love the effect of natural textiles in decor. So think different types of wood, metal, clay, maybe you want to use some gorgeous woven and textiles. There are so many options here and really the more that you use, the more that you incorporate into your home, the more elevated and just interesting your space is going to feel. And it's almost like those different textures help tell the story of your home. Then one quick but important tip is to consider functionality. One question that I'd always recommend asking yourself as you're decorating your space is just, is it practical? I think that it can sometimes be easy for us to naturally be drawn towards ideas ideas that are going to look nice in our space and be visually appealing, but at the end of the day, what's far more important is that it functionally is going to work well for us. So get rid of that chair in your bedroom that just collects clothes or that photo that you have displayed on a shelf that's always getting knocked off. In an ideal space, you want to make it so that form and function can work in harmony together so they aren't at odds. Then another fun tip for creating a very cozy, warm space is to add life with plants. 
I'm a big fan of the power of plants and really bringing a fresh and natural vibe into your home. And whether real or fake, I find that they're a great way to bring the peace and the tranquility of the outdoors into your home. Personally, I do mostly like to opt for real plants because I feel like there is that je ne sais quoi that they add to that space. Plus, they do have the added benefit of cleaning your air on top of looking beautiful. So real plants are kind of my favorite, but I think that there's also a very real place for fake plants and I have a couple of them in my collection as well. So really, it's all just about personal preference. Either way you decide to go though, I really feel like plants can add that beautiful sense of newness and life into your home. And honestly, I'm saying plants, but you can achieve a very similar effect with flowers too. That's something that I love to do in an easy way just to bring some color and fun into your home is to use cut flowers to perhaps decorate to go along Along with the season or just to bring some bright pops of color into your home. There's something so fun and invigorating about them and I just find it so beautiful. Then I also want to talk about a great way just to kind of reduce the visual clutter in your home and that's to remove words and branding. When we see words, whether we realize it or not, our brains are always instinctively trying to read them, which often gets in the way of us really being able to take in a space as a whole. So where possible, I'm really big I'm trying to remove obvious words and branding from my home. So things like word signs, large logos, I've pretty much entirely removed from my decor. And the effect is really that of visual simplicity. Now the one exception I will say to this is especially if you love reading, I do think that a beautiful bookshelf can be a great addition to a home. It can be a great way to show your personality. So I'm not against books or bookshelves, but my suggestion here is just to make it intentional. And one way that I really like to do this is to organize my books by color. That way your brain kind of reads all of those books as a unit. Color is one of those things that almost like intercepts the effect of words on our brains. And so our brains can look at that pattern of colors, be able to interpret as blocks of color rather than immediately trying to go and read every single one of those book titles. That's one great way that you can give something like a bookshelf, a feeling of unity and cohesion rather than just feeling like a jumble of books. So for book lovers, a beautifully displayed bookshelf can be a great way to kind of inject your personality into your home. But then another fantastic way to do this is simply to incorporate meaningful art. Art is something that's so personal. And so my encouragement here would just be to skip the box store instead to find pieces of art that really speak to you. Find decor items that are really going to help you to tell a story and to bring your personality into your home. So maybe you want to put up a picture that you painted or a photo that you took on your travels. That's something that we've done a lot in our own home and it really does just add such a personalized element to your space but if you maybe want a more elevated look or you just aren't super crafty yourself there are other ways that you can kind of incorporate that meaningful art into your home as well something that i love to do is to focus on items that have been handmade either perhaps by a local craftsman or picked up on various travels and speaking of travels something else that can be great to do is to use professional photos of various locations locations that you visited. That way you're able to use pictures that are better than you probably ever could have taken. But every time that you look at those photos, you can still see them and be reminded of that time you went to visit that place. That can be a perfect way to really marry a desire for beautiful photography that's still meaningful. This is really one of those things that can make a huge difference and really help you to create a cozy space. So really lean into it, have fun with it, and really try to focus on those things things that are going to be personal and meaningful to you. All right, let's wrap this up with a tip that's really going to help you to incorporate that simple, refined look into your home, and that's just to use clean lines. I find that this tip is especially helpful when it comes to furniture, but picking items with clean, simple lines can really help to ground a space and serve as a great foundation that you can build off of. So for example, with a bed, you could pick something that has a bit more of an architectural, more structured feel, then add all kinds of different layers and textures to it to create a beautiful contrast of something that has the kind of clean lines in the furniture, but then all of this cozy layering on top of it. That can make for a perfect balance of being minimal, but still very inviting. And the bed is a great, very easy example of where you can use this tip, but it can be applied in so many other areas as well. Whether that's in your dining 
room, your living room, your kitchen. Using some clean lines can really help you to kind of ground your space and it can be a perfect offset or counterpart to more organic shapes and textures. All right, well, we've made it to the end of our list and I really hope that this is giving you some practical ideas on ways that you can create a cozy and inviting home that's free from visual clutter. But now I would love to know which of these tips do you want to begin implementing in your own home? Or are there any that you follow that I didn't mention here? I would love to hear about them. So be sure to let me know what those are in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Bye.